what's going on in the world right now, and we think we are at a very, very specific time in which we're, we, we both face very, very important challenges uh, like the climate challenge, you know, some the, a lot of social uh, unrest and discussion about what is currently going on. And the other hand, also tremendous opportunities, right, in particular, and tremendous change related to, in particular, to technology. What we're trying to create at the end of the day is, is an ecosystem, right, in which, and, and, and maybe that's going to be, I'm, I'm, my gut feeling is that this is deep down what's going to be the most important thing, right? Putting these people together, creating the connections, again, between academics of different backgrounds, uh, you know, with technologies, pushing them on, trying to bring up ideas about the challenges and, and, and all of that. And also, as I said, bringing, you know, the, bringing also policymakers, bringing large corporations, bringing... <laughs> Welcome everyone on this third episode of the Unbiased Podcast, your podcast about women and men of science, and more specifically about the scientific research in economics. Today, I'm honored to have Jean-Philippe Bonardi with me, who is full professor and the dean at HEC Lausanne, and also member of the executive committee of E4S, Enterprise for Society, which will be the core of the discussion today. And uh, Jean-Philippe Bonardi do also scientific research, of course, which is at the focused on the, the interface between political economy and business strategy. We also have two research papers on the COVID together. And again, really glad to have you here. Jean-Philippe, how are you doing? Great, Kata. Thank you very, very much for the invitation. Um, well, very happy to be with you and doing well, doing well. <laughs> Fantastic. Really, really glad. And so just to start, just a few words about yourself. So, so what's your background? How did you arrive to this position of, of executive committee of E4S, which we'll, we will talk afterwards, and also as the, the dean, uh, important position and important figure for HSC Lausanne? All right. So, yes. Yeah, so a uh, little bit about myself. I'm, uh, I'm French origin. I mean, from a Corsican family. So, you know, <laughs> not totally French always, but, uh, <laughs> but um, uh, did my PhD um, in um, industrial economics slash business strategy at HEC Paris. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after that, you know, after my, uh, and I, I worked on the, on question related to deregulation of, uh, of markets in particular at the time, uh, you know, it was um, what was going on was the deregulation of telecom and electricity and so on. So I've done um, my dissertation was on that, right, on the on, on, on deregulation processes, what was driving them and also how would uh, how did firm behave in this type of, uh, of processes, right? In particular, how did firm articulate strategies uh, in terms of, uh, you know, prices, price competition adjustment, adjustment to price competition, new product in, uh, introduction with lobbying strategies to try to manage the deregulation process, right? So my, my, my dissertation was on that. And, um, and after that, I, um, I actually went to, uh, for a postdoc uh, to Berkeley um, uh, in, um, uh, that was in 1988. And I, uh, I, I went to a group that is called Business and Public Policy. Uh, uh, at Berkeley, which looks at specifically these questions of, you know, the, the relationship between, uh, you know, market strategies with non-market, meaning, you know, lobbying relationship with governments and so on and so forth. There's a big focus uh, uh, on these type of questions in this group, at least at the time. Uh, and then from there, I decided to try to stay a bit more uh, in the U.S. So I uh, actually found a, a visiting position at Tulane University in New Orleans. Uh, and then from there, I really tr tried to look for a full-time job, and uh, I ended up at uh, University of Western Ontario in Canada, uh, Ivy School of Business, uh, where I stayed until uh, uh, 2007, uh, where I joined um, HEC Lausanne, so the, the Faculty of Business and Economics of the of the University of Lausanne. And I've been so I've been there since since then, and uh, I actually became the dean. Um, of the faculty uh, in 2015, uh, summer 2015. So I'm in my sixth year uh, mm -hmm. as a dean, um, and I am going to step down actually as a dean at the summer, so after six years. 
<laughs> oh wow okay uh, i didn't know that yes yeah, so, so you really it was your first year when i i graduated as a master i remember the the graduation day uh, with your presentation okay that's, that's a fascinating uh, parkour thanks thanks a lot and and you you talked a bit about your research but I, i'm sure many people uh, students who are thinking about doing that can you just pick one of your main paper or key contribution to the literature and and just very simply explain what you did there. Yeah, so, um, uh, so <laughs> I guess there are several, which is, <laughs> which is probably a good thing. But you know, one of the one of the papers that probably was a, was a, was a, a kind of a defining one for me is a is a paper in which we look at um, the, the 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 lobbying strategies of electricity firms in the U.S. Right and how they, they basically decide first to initiate. Um, uh, so uh, may, maybe just to, to, re to recap on this, the uh, electricity firms in the US, the way they are uh, regulated is by, um, uh, they, they, they are regulated by, um, by a regulatory authority, which basically uh, constrains them on uh, the prices they can charge mm -hmm. and also uh, the rate of return they can get, right? And if firms want to renegotiate those kind of things, right, which is what they do in these kind of reg regulate, regulatory or deregulatory pr uh, processes, they have to essentially contact the, the, the regulatory authority, which then opens actually a, um, a period of, of lobbying, not only by the firm, but also by many other actors, right? So groups of consumers, environmental groups, uh, 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 it can be industrial consumers or other firms, or it can be individual consumers, you know, who pay the, the electricity rates and so on and so forth. And um, um, what happens during that thing is that everybody lobbies. You have the generally public hearings, uh, it's documented, everybody brings information. And in the end, uh, the, the regulatory authority decides on the rate of return uh, that the, the company can charge uh, uh, to uh, uh, at the, sorry at the at the rate that the company can charge and rate of return it can get right and so it's very interesting um, you know in terms of identification and so on for uh, when when you study uh, lobbying strategies by firms because in that case the firm is the one who initiates the the, the period right oh, yes. mm -hmm. and invest you know uh, and and does many things during that period and then you have a measure of that allows you to identify, you know, whether the strategy in a way was successful or not uh, ex post, because you see what, what is the public decision that has been made, right? And it's something that, that was um, very important because very often when you look at um, the lobbying literature or, uh, you know, all the literature about the political strategies that firms develop, the problem is that it's first very difficult to know exactly or to try to identify when the lobbying strategy starts because you know it's a bit diffuse you have you have data about the amount of lobbying that firms spend but it's it's not uh, it's not obvious exactly you know what is really the start of a strategy on a specific issue so here you have a clear measure of that and very often you also don't have a very clear measure of what happens right so what what is the outcome and here you have a you have a very good measure of the two and so and you can also do some uh, some kind of interesting econometrics in the sense that you can have, you know, the uh, two-stage approach in which you first measure, you know, what decides the firms to initiate. So, you know, what, what pushes the firms to to decide on the on the on the political strategy it's gonna it's gonna um, it's gonna adopt. And then uh, uh, ex post, you can you can look at, you know, again uh, uh, the outcome. You can measure the outcome, and so you can you can have some two-stage measure. So, in that in that specific paper. Uh, that was published in the Academy of Management Journal. We we use a Heckman approach, right? In which you know we have a probit first, in which you know we look at you know um, uh, the decision by firms to initiate in a certain year uh, versus others. So we ha we have about uh, I don't remember now how many years of data we have in the sample, but we have a, we have a sample uh, uh, of years, and then uh, after that in the second stage we look at the public policy decision itself, right? And therefore. Um, uh, the, if, if you will, the outcome, right, of the of the political strategy, and and in that context, you know, one of the things that we were trying to look at is, in fact, how much is firm impacted by the political competition it faces, in particular, competition political competition by competing lobbying groups, can be lobby okay. groups of consumers, groups of uh, uh, of, uh, of again of industrial firms who also pay the rates, uh, environmental groups, right, and so on. 
And, and we find that actually the, 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 the impact of political competition is quite high, both on the decision to initiate Mm -hmm. And on the final decision that is made by the by the policymaker, right? And in particular, you know, I mean, we, you might think that this this result is not very surprising, uh, uh, and we, so we find it surprising. In, or you know, what we found was actually interesting for us, and uh, uh, and this is why I thought that this paper was was important for us in two ways. First, um, uh, because I mean, in fact, you know, we observe, uh, you know, the differences across groups in terms of uh, uh, of how important, uh, how, how much uh, impact they had on the on both on the firm decision but, and on the, the the policy decision. In particular, uh, uh, what you what we find is that consumer groups typically have very little impact, mm -hmm. right? Which you know, if you if you know a little bit the literature on lobbying and collective action problems and so on, then it's not super surprising that you know. It's very costly for consumers to really organize, and, uh, and so you know, in, in most cases, they don't have a ton of decision, a ton of impact on on policy decisions. In particular, when you need to collect information and detailed information about what is going on, which is the case here in a regulated regulated you know environment. Uh, but what and and we find that actually industrial consumers have impact. But on the other end, what was very interesting is that the ones who also have impact on the decision are environmental groups, right? And so, you know, it's, uh, I mean, obviously, you know, uh, we know that groups have impacts on regulate, regulate, regu regulate, uh, regulated, I mean, regu decision regu related to regulatory decisions, but it's not completely clear why in that case they would, because, you know, it's about rates, it's about rate of return. But, you know, um, when we talked after that, after that, we ran some interviews and so on, and we realized that, you know, Groups like the Sierra Club, for instance, pay a lot of attention to these because it's a way for it's a way for them to to build up uh, credibility and to build up, you know, impact uh, on the public decisions that they will be able to use on other decisions afterwards. Uh, mm -hmm. will be maybe more important for you know uh, related to environmental uh, protection and, uh, and uh, environmental uh, norms and regulation and so on, right? So so there's a strategy by these. Um, by these environmental groups to actually you know, try to impact all the, the regulatory decision to have access to the policy making, um, not only for the short run, but also on the longer run to try to establish influence in a way. Mm -hmm. Also, it really, really applies and useful, uh, which leads to, to what you're doing now, partly with C4S, really applied side of research. And, and, and one thing you, you said that's super important about re research and that's uh, often un not really well understood by, by people outside this realm is that maybe you have a prior or you think you know the effect. I mean, one of my papers is about the effect of arms on violence and everybody that I tell I, I'm working on that, they are like, of course, there is a positive effect. But well, first, it's not necessarily that clear. And then measuring the magnitude which is exactly what you said sometimes you you think okay potentially those groups have an impact but what about the magnitude and then doing kind of a rat race like which one has more importance or which what's the relative importance of this type of groups compared to the environmentalists and, and i think that's that's really key in scientific research and in in also the way we do research in economics because we have such a focus on causal impact which is exactly the purpose it's to being to be able really to quantify the effect and not only saying well it's positive it's negative so so really really yeah, no, a good so, example of that yeah, yeah completely completely agree with you right so in that in that specific paper you know we compare marginal effects and stuff like that so you 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 you're, you're right that now you know with econometrics if you have a good empirical setup you can actually do uh, many interesting things. Uh, and I agree with you. I mean, sometimes it is very important to revisit even some things that people, uh, you know, that fit people priors, but just to see whether, you know, uh, uh, you know, you, uh, I mean, you really find what you expect to find. And then always, you know, as was the case for us here, you always find things that are, that are basically things that you did not really expect, right? And so, and then you, you then, then, then this, this is what leads you to think a little bit more in terms of, okay, you know, so, so why is it like that? You know, what can we do? And generally, you know, it's set up uh, 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 avenues for future research projects uh, by itself. So for me, this is how research is going. Uh, and, you know, you, you said something that is important for me. It's true. And when I realized, uh, you know, throughout all my career and what motivates me, I mean, you talked about impact and, 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 and practical impact. And for, for me, it's very, very important. I mean, I, uh, 
um, I, I believe that we, we it, it, I mean, in particular, you know, when you look at uh, economic or, uh, you know, uh, 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 business phenomena, you, you need to be able to say something, you need to be able to communicate things that basically, I mean, mean something for real life, right? And I, and I think for us, uh, especially now, you know, I see it even better as a, as a dean of a school of management. I mean, this is what people expect from us, right? I mean, students yes. learn about things that matter. And, uh, you know, the, the, the companies, the economic sector and so on wants, I mean, want us to, to, to look at things that basically, you know, are, are going to matter, are going to have impact, are going to tell them something they don't know or something they know already, but it's going to comfort their knowledge. So I think we, we, we are, I mean, this, for me, it's a very, very important part of our mission, right? And so that's, and, and, and I realize you're right that this is something that has uh, driven a lot of my career, yeah. Yeah, very, very important point that that we definitely share, by the way. But yeah. and, and I think I was discussing this with with uh, friends. Uh, I think one week ago, who are not in, in in research, and they were kind of picturing scientific research uh, as those people doing math in their office and just exchanging between them, reading between them their papers, and and the world was really not aware at all of what it was about. It was just a some stuff between a very uh, small group and uh, and also they, they made the, the point that well it's very specific it's really math intensive other people can't really use that and i think first now there is more and more communication and second even and i think really even when the the, the research is really theoretical really only a small group of people in the world will be even able to to read the paper even this piece of work sometimes does not have at all any application but then actually you can build research on that and even if the piece itself will never have direct application sometimes it helps to to go in a direction to to cite it to build and to continue working in that direction which eventually then will give something that has really precise application i can really think about bettina klaus who is in our, our uh, department because she's doing theory, she's uh, come, she has a, a math background, and and she knows very well math, working on theoretical models. But all those math that she's doing leads to market design, to the decision of of kidney allocation, priority, who gets which kidney, uh, the priority in marriage room. So sorry. Marriage and yeah. she's, <laughs> marriage, marriage. she's marriage. also looking at kind of uh, you know matching for a <laughs> kind of you know loving partners, right? So yes, it's, exactly. it's very practical. <laughs> Maybe I'm mistaken, but I would say that her uh, thesis actually was uh, also on picking the uh, ideal roommate uh, during your university stay. But not sure, but I think that was this about this. But yeah, so so really it's in interesting how you can go deeply in the math, but eventually then have some impact, uh, real impact. No, that's right. And, and you're right. I mean, you know, what I was saying before is that we, we should, of course, develop theories. That's what we are here for. In a way, you know, the, the empirics uh, uh, has to come second because, you know, the theory is something by which we say something about the world. Uh, so it's, it is very, very important that, you know, and, and that us specifically in universities that we do this. Um, but at the same time, we need to be also to, to be able to recoup with reality, right? And then, you know, uh, use these theories to, uh, uh, to apply problems, say something about them and communicate. I mean, I, you know, you said uh, you, what you said and why I think that we are living actually a very, a very interesting time uh, for, for academic is first because there are big problems to solve. So it's always a good thing for us when people don't really have answers and, you know, turn for us for potentially some ways of thinking about those. And also, um, you know, the, the, in the current period, I mean, you know, the new social media, you know, what we're doing today and so on, allows basically uh, a lot more communication, a lot more exchange of ideas. Um, and so it's, it's a lot easier for us to reach out, right, with, with research results, with what we're doing uh, in universities than it was uh, uh, in the past where, you know, for instance, you had to try to kind of hope to, you know, uh, get some attention from the media or something like that to be able to to get people to talk about what you're doing. I mean, it's not the case anymore. So I think we are living in a fantastic period, right? To, <laughs> to, be, to be researchers and to be academics. Um, yes, completely agreed. And, and that's, that will lead us perfectly to the main, uh, main subject of, of, of today. So that was really exactly linking and leading to, to the main uh, focus on this video, actually, E4S Enterprise for Society. So, so could you just tell us 
what is it all about? Where does it come from? And really in a few words, what is Enterprise for Society? Yes, so Enterprise for Society. So this is a new center that we have launched uh, together with our partners from EPFL, which is, you know, Ecole Polytechnique, uh, with which we share the, the campus in Lausanne and uh, IMD, which is, uh, you know, one of the leading uh, uh, schools of management, in particular at the level of executive education and connection with companies and so on and so forth. And, um, uh, you know, the, the, the center was, ba was basically born um, uh, because of the, I mean, a, a joint understanding and joint discussion about what's going on in the world right now, right? And what's going on in the world right now, and we think we are at a very, very specific time in which we're, we, we both face very, very important challenges, uh, like the climate challenge, you know, some the, a lot of social uh, unrest and discussion about what is currently going on. And the other hand, also tremendous opportunities, right? In particular, and tremendous change related to, in particular, to technology, right, uh, of different kinds. And maybe we, we can talk about that a, a bit later. But we think that the conjunction of these two things both call for, you know, um, uh, some kind of new thinking about how to deal with the problems, uh, but also a lot of thinking about, um, you know, how we can basically exploit the best, the, the best in the best way possible, the opportunities that are there. And, you know, when we were talking about that, you know, with our colleagues from the two, the two other institutions, um, it was very, very clear that, you know, it's at the connection between everything is going to be at the connection between the technological changes that are currently going on. Uh, which basically, again, can, can generate opportunities to handle, for instance, you know, the climate problem and so on. Uh, 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 so the technology, but also how we build up, uh, you know, uh, policies, how we build up, uh, you know, uh, uh, the private sector kind of strategies and so on in order to deal, right, uh, with those problems and to seize these opportunities. And so we decided to basically get together to do this, right? Um, and uh, in a way, I mean, the, 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 the center is organized around three things. First, we have uh, a research uh, pillar, which is uh, where we put, you know, um, uh, researchers from the three institutions together to work on specific topics that mm -hmm. have to do with uh, essentially with how the world is transforming and, and how we can address, you know, some of the challenges that I was talking about before. So that's the first the first pillar. The it's, second it's pillar. The, the research is defined by the researcher within the group by by or is it like anyone affiliated to Eforest can can come up with a project and then is there some decision of is it fitting in, in the, the framework or is it also that there is a um, request from outside from policymakers for some research or how is it so far this angle? So the, 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 it's a bit of both, right? So essentially the, the three sources of, uh, of potential ideas uh, uh, are the ones you mentioned. First, we, in fact, we really started there. We, we talked to our profs first of all to see whether there, there was really some appetite for this type of center, you know, uh, in the school and whether they were ready to, to give it actually really some, uh, some interest and some of their time. And, and so, you know, when you do this, then well, right away, you actually try to stimulate people to come up with, uh, with some kinds of projects they want to work on. So, you know, for instance, uh, somebody you know very well, Raphael Lalive, you know, really, you know, step up very quickly and said, look, I mean, the future of work is really something that really is very, is a great of interest for me. Started talking to people at TPFL who are working on robots, on inter artificial intelligence and so on to try to figure out, you know, what are the kind of technologies that probably will shape right? Uh, some of the, the way we will work tomorrow, uh, you know, him and, and some of his group working on the labor, labor economics and, you know, again, what is, what might structure the labor markets and then reaching out to some of some colleagues, for instance, at IMD, like Bettina Buschel or people like that who are interested in more the managerial aspect of those questions. And they put together a group, which basically has started working on, on, on this, right? And so this is something that basically came up uh, in a way bottom up. Uh, mm -hmm. In some other cases, you know, we have also tried to define some of the things that 
we believe are going to be uh, important things that we need to look at, right? So, for instance, you know, uh, uh, the digital economy, you know, uh, how is it going to be structured? We see that platforms uh, now in this kind of uh, digital and network economy play a much bigger role. So, we need to have a project on that, right? Because it's probably going to be one of the key features of how, you know, uh, the economics or the economy of tomorrow is being structured. And so that, you know, we sort of Establish this, and now you know we are uh, uh, in touch with some of the researchers. You know, in particular, you know, uh, uh, a, a new professor uh, uh, that we just uh, that we just hire at HEC. You know, I was talking to him yesterday evening. So, you know, Christian working on these questions, and then uh, you know we have uh, uh, somebody like Mike Way at IMD looking at these things, and then there's a big uh, center at EPFL working on digital trust. So again, you know, the idea, that, uh, and there it came, it came. You know, so the the, the research discussion has started, and 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 so there it came a little bit more from a from from a top down, and then we're trying to actually get people to join us from from the the, the private sector or from governments, and mm -hmm. so and 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 you know uh, there we're trying to discuss with them the type of topics they would like us to look at, and um, and 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 you know so this is another way by which you know some of the projects are probably going to develop uh, as we as we move forward. Mm -hmm. So so you see the. The, the the three we want to we want to be open to anything right um, mm -hmm. uh, and to uh, any kind of uh, but but basically what we want is of course that uh, that people concentrate on again some of the some of the trying to really work on what this economy of tomorrow is going to be right uh, how how do we deal with the challenges uh, but also how do we seize the opportunities the best we can mm -hmm. no but that's that's very well summarized and 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 at the same time it's it's the beginning like we are at the eve of this e4s so i guess it's also where it will define itself with uh, where it's needed what works what uh, it's it's yeah. less useful uh, over time and i think with all the challenges we face today that are really actual that you mentioned i, I think we can definitely mention the COVID, and that's and this pandemic and it's a, a good example because I've seen many articles of communication, of uh, um, explanation of the topic and, and summarizing research by people in E4S. So really reaching out to the media, to the to a general public and trying really to communicate. And that's absolutely central. Yesterday I was sharing this, you have a, which is usually a good channel of, of media, so I won't cite it, but who, who published a paper about the vaccine in Switzerland of COVID and one of the first thing they said in the, the headline was like uh, five deaths and I was and then I, I went through the, the thing of course super interested by the topic trying to look at it and then it was basically five people who died unfortunately in the days following the, the vaccine and, and uh, if I'm not mistaken all quite old so basically the information the content as, a, as somebody who's doing research about causality the content of information that you have in this title is just old people die basically you have nothing you can learn nothing else at all and i think with the covid and such information that is shared everywhere it's also very central to communicate properly to share the relevant information and to help people to digest this information so then I, after the article i was sharing in the comments trying to explain why is it's they tried to do it in the in the, the the article so they mentioned correlation and causality and this is not causality but the thing is it's in the headline you have five people who die and i, I think 99 percent of the people would just read that and then relay the information and then they be back off from the vaccine so i think it's it was very useful what you did during the the pandemic to share information and knowledge and advice on the economy and the and all this so yeah yeah so so you know within e4s we i would say you know first first we have a health so we want to look at the health sector you know there there is a big life science um, uh, department at epfl yes. and 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 you know we have also uh, on on the union campus we have the faculty of biology and medicine who is also doing mm -hmm. a lot of things and you know at HSC, we have a long tradition yeah. of also uh, involvement in uh, in health economics and, mm -hmm. um, and and health management and so on so uh, for sure you know and and the future of health is is a very very interesting topic by itself which we need to address 
in a in a platform like E4S. So that's the first thing. I must say that you know on the second point, which is really what you mentioned, the, the COVID itself. I mean, we we also used it a little bit because you know pretty much E4S were launched at the moment of the COVID, right? A bit before, but you know, and so it, it, it created problems for us because you know there were lots of things that we had planned, which became impossible to do some events and so on to try yeah. to launch the the center the best way possible. But then what we did is that you know we tried to be as flexible as we could and we we actually use the COVID a little bit also as a as a proof of concept, right, for E4S, showing that mm -hmm. if we had researchers from the three institutions, if we could put them together and so on, we could actually work quickly at putting together some stuff that were uh, kind of, you know, meaningful and potentially important and participate right away into the public debate about, about policies, about, um, about what could be done, and also, you know, trying to, as you said, to, to empirically maybe bring a little bit of clarity on some of the things. I mean, you and I, you, you know, we have worked on a, mm -hmm. on a on a joint paper on a, on a joint project on, on lockdowns and you know the impact of lockdown and so on and which uh, and another one actually on the impact of lockdown on on pollution so uh, uh, it's um, I, th I think this is actually what what this thing is all about and this is where also we for us we think about it from the research side as something that is a bit different from what we do uh, let's say uh, generate research. I mean, we want the ins we need the institute to be reactive to 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 events, to what people have in mind, to people to the mm -hmm. questions that people have at the moment, right? And so, even though you know our job as researchers is also to sort of uh, step back a little bit, collect data, and so on, we try to do it in the context of the C4S uh, institute or center as you know as flex as flexibly as possible to be able to bring answers to and some answers, right? Um, as 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 flex to be as possible to, I mean, based on what is really going on, right? And so mm -hmm. it's also an important, uh, uh, it's an important feature of that uh, of that center, which you know we we want to be there in the public debate, and we want to bring right results that hopefully we think are important results uh, uh, to the outside, you know, as um, as early as possible in a way. So mm -hmm. so breaking the the normal chain of uh, university research, which is typically quite long. I mean, uh, as you know for sure, right? I mean, uh, in most of the cases when we engage in a research project, we, we we publish on this project three years, four years down the road, right? And on some of these things that we want to look at with E4S, we, we, we don't have that much time in a way, right? Mm -hmm. So we, we need to speed up the process. We need to find ways to, by bringing again people together and energies and so on, we, mm -hmm. We, 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 we need to be able to do that also through communication again, right? And modern communication, uh, uh, social media and so on, which allow to actually, uh, you know, reach out uh, in, a, in a much more fluid way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. And I, again, back to what we were saying, I think it's, it's really central. So many people outside of research ask me, but where do you can read those articles? Well, it's in some specific journal, so you can't read that. It's not in the language. So I think you were doing really a uh, central mission and also as you said maybe doing things differently so it helps it might help also the, the researcher to to kind of split the focus and the angle they work the fundamental research theoretical research is, is as we said is really important so they can focus maybe on that also within their usual department university even if it's linked it's not a clear cut but then with project linked to a4s have also this angle of having maybe shorter paper really applied or I, i'm not sure but just to give a, a rough idea and, and and something that's really the the, the broad public can, can digest more easily uh, the press and, and so on so so right. really uh, an important mission for 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 that's true and by the way you know when we're talking about the sources of the project i mean one of the things that we want to do and that we haven't i mean we, we are really starting on that but is that you know another pillar of the e4s project is actually startups right mm. and and the reason why it was very important for us to bring startups and to have a startup pillar into the project is that we believe that a lot of the new innovations in particular regarding technologies that are going to potentially change you know uh, the the world and the economy of tomorrow mm. are going to come from these from these startups from these organizations may probably more than from large, well, I mean, existing organizations, which typically have um, uh, more difficulty to really innovate and and question their existing business models.
level and so on and so forth. And so we, um, this is why, you know, we believe that uh, that part of the that part of the innovation and, and the thing we need to look at will come from startups. And so what we hope is that, you know, generally, I mean, in schools of management and economics, I mean, you see people doing startups, you see people doing, uh, you know, let's say hardcore research, mm -hmm. but typically there is not a lot of link between them. Right, maybe some people studying entrepreneurship, you know, would make the link, but mm -hmm. here the, the the ambition is really to sort of say, look, I mean, we want to create this ecosystem in which we have startups, we have researchers. Some of the new things that startups are going to come up with are going to change, for instance, you know, the future of work or the future of energy or the future of transportation. Think about, you know, uh, um, mm -hmm. all the all the vehicles, you know, uh, that the, the, you know the the self driving vehicles yeah. and uh, and yeah. a lot of things like that. So. Startups are going to come with it, come up with innovation on this. We need to integrate these innovations into the way we think about the economy of tomorrow, what kind of benefits and challenges it's going to mm -hmm. bring, right? And so you see, the, I think there is something that is fundamentally very innovative and very, I hope, very different in what we are trying to do here uh, by, by, um, by, by also generating some of the projects from the innovation that will come uh, from our ecosystem, also from the labs at EPFL and so on, or the, the labs at some of the UNIL, um, uh, you know, uh, laboratories. But but you see, we want to integrate more because mm -hmm. we think that this is really going to be at the key of some of the changes. We want to integrate more the, some of the things that are going to be some of the innovation that are going to that are going to come up in this ecosystem, and 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 put that in the hands also of the researchers who say, look, I mean, now what, what is it yeah. going to mean, right? Yeah. What Im impact is it going to have? Uh, what should we expect? <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. And I think it, it really creates this, as we explained, virtuous cycle, because basically research inspire of really the, the things that matters today or will matter tomorrow is really startups creating and shaping the, 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 the this world. And also, the, the reverse, those startups learning actually from uh, from research and 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 seeing the results to to understand where it's going to lead and and so on. So so really a very promising angle as well. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so so really the core of E4S putting the effort of those three big centers that were kind of working a bit on their own and and now really linking with all. They are specific cities and, and type of contribution. We, have, we had Charles, uh, Charles Ayubi, who is now do, uh, doing research at Harvard. Uh, he was from uh, EPFL uh, on the podcast, the first episode. And he has a paper actually on, on showing the importance when you do research of, of having different backgrounds and knowledge and how this really give uh, better research if, if you want to, to make it simply. So yeah, no, exactly. This is uh, for me, I mean, this interdisciplinarity, if you will, is at the core of, of what we need to do, right? If we want to answer some of the challenges that, that we talked about before. Uh, and so I think it's extremely important. But, you know, deep down, my, my gut feeling is that, um, I mean, beyond the specific research pieces or whatever you want and ideas that will come, I think that what we're, what we're trying to create at the end of the day is, is an ecosystem, right? In which, and, and, and maybe that's going to be, I'm, I'm, my gut feeling is that this is deep down what's going to be the most important thing, right? Putting these people together, creating the connections, again, between academics of different backgrounds, uh, you know, with technologies, pushing them on, trying to bring up ideas about the challenges and, and, and all of that. And also, as I said, bringing, you know, the bringing also policymakers, bringing large corporations, bringing startup. I mean, for me, what, what we're really trying to create here uh, in Lausanne is create this ecosystem that is unique and that is going to, which people from really, well, really at the top level of what they are doing, right, in their different disciplines and, um, and, 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 and level of innovation, which is basically going to, should, I mean, should, I, I, I'm very hopeful for, for this thing to become important, meaningful, and really to have big impact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm sure, and as you said, it was a good testing ground, the, the COVID, and I think it, it showed already as the very early uh, the usefulness. And, and I think this leads to really one of the core, I see it now really as, as a big picture, is, is that you're even created now a master, and, and you will have the, the first uh, people taking this master next semester, uh, next uh, next academic year, and, and and what is it about? What is it uh, again? The core and the specificity of this new master at at E4S. 
Right. So this new cohort, which starts in 2021, September 2021. So yes, I mean, you know, I talked about the research pillar. I talked about the startup innovation pillar, if you will. Uh, there's, of course, a third pillar that is completely key to what we're trying to do. And this third pillar is uh, is a, the education or the training, right? We need to, if we come up with good stuff, we actually need to train and, and with good ideas about how the world is going to be and what is going to be important that, in that world and, the, uh, and how we answer some of those challenges. We also need to train, you know, the future generation of students um, uh, uh, on that, right? And and we need we need to, we need to give them the the right training for this. We need to involve them also in the thinking about all of this. And so this is why very very quickly, very early on, when we had started having this discussion with EPFL and IMD, we we started thinking about uh, a program, right? And um, and 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 clearly, you know, it, it came up very quickly that it had to be a uh, a master program for you know basically non-experienced students, if you will, right? Who are the students who are this new generation that is really going to bring up change, um, and that this should be jointly delivered by the three institutions. Uh, so with prof, profs working together from the from the three institution on the three campuses, and with a very interdisciplinary approach, right? And so this is what this program is going to be. This new master, as you said, I mean you know we're very happy because uh, you know I mean it's not easy by the way to actually put together a program like that you know to have a joint regulation across three different institutions with of course their own dna right and their own set of rules and all of that so it, it took us actually quite a bit of time and you know this is what interdisciplinary is about right i mean it it can yes. it can um, you can you can reach big big things right and you can achieve big things i think and very important ones but it's hard Mm -hmm. And so, so we went through that. And so, uh, you know, a, a few days ago, we actually had the authorization to really that everything was was okay regulation wise and that we could start it, we could start communicate about the program and, and also op open, you know, the, the, the admission process and, and all of this. One of the very important specificity of this program from that point of view is that it's going to take both uh, 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 engineering students or art science students from schools like EPFL, not only EPFL, you know, of course, it's, uh, it will be taught in English. And so it will be, mm -hmm. it will be open to the, to the, to the world uh, and to the outside world. And uh, uh, students from economics and management, again, could be students from HEC Lausanne, of course, but it could be students from, you know, from elsewhere as well. And so, and we're going to try to construct the whole pedagogy around right um, uh, teams of students that will be basically uh, inter interdisciplinary teams with uh, engineer you know uh, helping maybe probably you know uh, uh, econ and management students on the technology part you know what it means you know what can we do and so on and so forth and uh, 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 management in economic students helping the engineers about okay what can we do with it uh, what what how, how can we market that you know what, how, how can we really make that these new technologies would be launched yeah. would be financed have impacts and uh, uh, so this is the, 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 the type of thing that we want to do it and which we think is going to make this um, uh, this program very very unique um, uh, down mm -hmm. the road. so the, mm -hmm. actually I, I don't think that we mentioned the name of this program right so uh, mm -hmm. the program is going to be um, the name of this program is um, a master in uh, um, uh, in sustainable management and technologies mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right and so again you see that it's you have the world sustainability so again that's about uh, you know solving some of these of these challenges that we're talking about I mean we, we need to find a way to build up Probably a more sustainable economy and a and a more and more sustainable business model, more sustainable governance structures, and and we believe that part of the answer is going to be not all, but part of the answer is going to be in the new technologies and how uh, these new digital technologies, artificial intelligence, robotics, and so on, uh, are going to help us uh, build up you know more efficient energy system, transportation system is going to reshape you know cities and 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 the organization of economic lives so that we can find right these new sustainable models so mm -hmm. i think it's actually all of this is fascinating wow. and very very exciting yeah. and i hope that uh, the students will follow <laughs> I, I, I would have done that uh, yeah, I, think I no really I, I think it's super exciting as you were shaping the program i was thinking about myself before the master and i was exactly willing to to go in that direction in the sense wanting to really to contribute to the world with with applied things but at the same time i really like the the, the math that we, I, i've been taught at, uh, at in the economics uh, faculty where it's it's really quantitative really technical and, and so it's it's really fascinating and again i think you 
you created something that's that's unique but so important you have right. different people with different backgrounds way of expressing themselves conception of the world even and then you put that together and it can only be enriching I, i'm quite sure so yeah. so 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 really i i think when for example I, i'm working on conflict but as a an academic researcher my brother is is uh, um, uh discuss peace treaties uh, in in conflict zone so we we share the same topic but with really we are at the opposite end of the spectrum he's going there to speak specifically with one person when he knows all the background everything and i just look and stand in my office there behind the computer and see or kind of understand the big picture with numbers and i think every time we speak he see the world completely different than me but the back and forth is super useful and i think that's exactly also what what the synergy that will be created there you have people yeah. who have really technical knowledge of technology you have those with the understanding of economics more than on the research side you have those with really applied knowledge of business and, and management and you put all those people together that should learn early to how to communicate. So that's no, that that's fascinating and, and really promising. Really, yeah, really no, <laughs> I, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be great. You know, I mean, if you look at the first semester of this program, yeah. the students are gonna go through uh, some tech courses. You know, in which they're gonna they're gonna take courses from EPFL profs who are gonna tell them about uh, robotics and what it could do, or again, artificial oh. intelligence or you know, digital technologies. And then basically the, the, ne the next period, they will, they will speak with Matthias Stoenig, who is going to teach a wow. big course about economic systems and, um, you know, why the system that we have right now has emerged and why potentially, you know, we could go towards the different systems and what kind of parameters we need to base it, well, we need to be able to handle and solve and so on to, to get there. Uh, and then there will be another course on uh, business ethics by Guido Palazzo on basically, wow. okay, so ethically, what does it mean? So we we really want to basically shake the tree and um, and shake the students a little bit by you know exposing them to all, all these different kinds of things uh, trying within the courses to have you know to to consider things you know in an interdisciplinary way but i think that a lot of the interdisciplinarity in the end is going to come in if if you will in the hand in the, in the heads of the students in the brain yeah. of the students yeah. right and uh, uh, where these connections are going to take place and um, and where you know i hope we hope some of the uh, both the technological but also the the, the social and uh, and business innovations are going to come as well mm -hmm. No, that's, that's, and with the name you mentioned, it made me realize basically you have three top institution in the world and you take to, you concentrate even the top among the top within those institutions to give you the class. So they have really a, a, a very dense uh, access to really top knowledge with fascinating people that you mentioned that I, I really, really love to hear. And, and uh, no, really that's, uh, I would love to follow the class. <laughs> I have to admit the more you say, the more I would like to be there. Yeah, we'll have to see, you know, maybe if it works, we'll, we'll make some of these uh, classes digital and then I don't know, maybe we will open them to the world. I mean, this is something that we have not discussed yet, but uh, but why not why not uh, uh, open things? Because at the end of the day, you know, it, uh, when we were talking about training and diffusing, it's not going to be only for, you know, these group of students. Uh, we need to find a way for E4S to have impact to actually uh, train more broadly, right? So this is something that we, we need to discuss with our partners, how are we going to do that? But again, I think that we really need to to consider this and mm -hmm. and think about how this could be done mm -hmm. sure i i think th there are universities sharing uh, uh, classes yeah. and, I, and i think once the the cost is already paid by the institution uh, to to put the, the 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 class in place the teacher coming and explaining and then when again when you with the few names you mentioned with those people who has tremendous knowledge who are fascinated fascinating I think sharing with the world, with people who maybe don't have the opportunity to go in Lausanne to learn this, but to to benefit from this knowledge, I think it, it can be only a winning winning proposition. Because in the end, the one going in the master will benefit from the whole, as you said, ecosystem. You have the whole structure, but you can also benefit from outside, just picking what you are interested in and without entering in a competition. So, so I think that's also. A, that's also something that I, I think about education. I mean, through my channel, I have many people contacting me who are from uh, from uh, the developing world, to, to make it simple. And I think it's always, and I see the difference, and I think making knowledge easily accessible to there, it's, it, it's really also a, a big mission we, we could share. 
totally agree. Totally agree. Yes, yes, some hundred percent. Uh, a very tricky question that, that you see, uh, as you, you want to you wanna answer, but I, and I think it, it's tricky in the sense with something new, it's sometimes difficult to answer to what's and, and so what's uh, afterwards after the master. So that's basically the question I know as, a, as exchanging a lot with students, I, as before I was a student representative, uh, many discussion about economics, it's always a discussion with economics, with the master in economics. It's really the students care a lot about job markets. So, so, and we see it with, with some of the master where the, the future is very clear. They know that if they go in accounting, they go in those four uh, companies. Yeah. They really like that because it's reassuring. And then they go in economics, they, they don't have a clear uh, results, but actually the hiring rate is one of the, the highest among the faculties. So, so you find a job, but sometimes it's a bit, they are a bit scared because they don't see themselves. And I think, and, and that's the, the, the question after this, it's long term. It's it's really what do you think as of today? Of course, as of today, beginning before the first uh, uh, year, where what will be the future of those those master students? Will they go in PhDs also, or, or not at all, and really focused in? Uh, so, what do you think? So, so I think it's completely wide open. I hope that some of them will go in PhDs, but you know. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, we need to remember that we, I mean, we, we cannot have only PhD students. So yes, in, in sure. a way we have, we have even good working conditions and so on for only a few of them. Right. So I, I don't think that, you know, in this master, it's going to be the main purpose. I think most of the students are going to go, um, are going to work uh, in the private sector or potentially even in, in government agencies, yes. you know, that, that are working on these kind of changes that I was talking about. But, you know, um, uh, I think, I think essentially the, the, my view at, the, at this point is that uh, it's really wide open for these students. Why? Because I think that, you know, as we go um, and as, you know, uh, our economies are changing and so on, there's going to be more and more appetite for this, uh, for this type of training. And in fact, we, we see that this is the case already. So I cannot give names, but, you know, um, when we when we started communicating about the fact that we were going to do this type of uh, this, this new program, uh, many companies contacted us and said, "Well, we would like to. We would like to be part of this. We would like to, to, to speak to the students. We would like to. Um, we some companies actually have, are, are going to sponsor us uh, potentially up to a certain, you know, uh, up to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, the the, the there's a, there, what I mean by that is that there's real interest by large companies." It can be industrial companies, it can be consulting firms. Uh, uh, and, and of course, we know that, you know, uh, and we hope that, you know, there will be also some of these students who will go into their own, uh, you know, kind of entrepreneurship venture, will go into the, the, the startup mode, because that's also one of the purposes to actually change what is going on and to bring in some innovation. So my view is that, you know, the, the, the range of opportunities for the students who are training, uh, in particular, also because you know, I mean, having good institutions on uh, on your on your diploma uh, certainly helps a lot. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, that there's going to be a, a, a great. A, a, I mean, there's going to be a world of opportunities for these guys. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm actually not worried at all about this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, uh, of course, a bit outside, you have a better knowledge of this, but I, I totally share your view. Maybe it's a bit ambitious to giving my, my opinion on that, but, but, but I agree. And I think it may, really made me think about the, the master in, in economics at HEC Lausanne. People went in very dif different di directions. The people I had in class with me were really all really quickly hired and really in sectors and doing things that they really fascinated about. It could be uh, in, in the public sector with, uh, as you said, uh, public agencies, but as well in the private sector, really doing uh, uh, stuff that they were fascinated about. And I think that's, I would be, I totally share your view. You have top scholars teaching you with this synergy. You have something that's kind of unique. And, and 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 hence you have less competition with exactly what you you have in your hands, and I and I think that's a very good recipe to to success to a successful professional life. And at the core of this, really, the thing that drives everything is is relevance. You want to cr create, give knowledge that's relevant and that they can apply in in real life situation for the world of tomorrow. So I can hardly see why why it will not be a, a, a very good line on your CV or, or preparation. So so again, really really excited to see where this leads. I know that already students 
ask me uh, uh, last semester, what about the, the master? At the time, I didn't know it was going to happen. Now I, I'm, I'm super excited that, I, that I, I've learned all this uh, now. Would, would you like to, to add something else about this, uh, this project uh, or a call uh, of action to, to future students or to the, the society? No, I mean, what, what I hope is that, um, is that uh, you know, is that everybody is going to follow, not only the, you know, the students in the program, but also uh, companies, policymakers, you know, that are going to see why it could be, it could make a difference, at least, you know, in the, in the western part of Switzerland, and also companies, you know, potentially helping us, because, you know, we are doing that. Uh, we, we cannot finance this project only based on um, on, on pure, you know, university and, and public money. It, it's actually, uh, I mean, we, we're going to look for, you know, uh, extra resources from also the, the, the private sector uh, uh, in, in particular. And, and I think it's actually, it's not only... Uh, it, it's not only a matter of money, it's a matter of, so of, um, of these companies potentially making a commitment, right, to actually uh, come work with us on this, right? And, uh, mm -hmm. and so, uh, so, so we, again, you know, deep down, I really think that what we are doing is that we're trying to create a very rich ecosystem, uh, mm -hmm. something that is going to actually potentially carry, you know, the, 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 the Western part of Switzerland, you know, much higher than it, it is before. I think we have everything here as both an in innovation industrial hub to actually um, make really, really good things happen. And so, so, I mean, as you, as you can see, I mean, beyond, beyond our, our universities or our, our own institutions, I mean, we have very, very high hopes uh, for, uh, for this E4S uh, uh, center to have uh, really a big impact. And I would end, I would end on this. <laughs> That's a really, really perfect ending for, for this fascinating talk. So, so Jean-Philippe, really thank you a million for, for all this. It's really inspiring to have you and, and to learn about this, this really great project that I'm looking forward uh, and hopefully will contribute a bit uh, over the, the following years. And I put all the, the links uh, in the description below so you can go to the website, seek information, find information about the master. And, and again, Jean-Philippe, just a very big thank you for taking the time among your very busy schedule uh, for, for talking with me and presenting this to, to the audience. So thank, thank you. you very much, Quentin. And thanks to you to actually, uh, you know, uh, take, take also the time to and, uh, invest in this kind of uh, discussion, which I find uh, great and, uh, and, and very, very important as well. So.